please welcome the mayor of Mesa, John Giles. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm glad that Jared helped us kind of set the bar at the appropriate level. All I have to do is be a little more entertaining than the Super Bowl, right? And we'll all feel like our morning was well spent. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here. Good morning and welcome to the 2019 State of the City for the City of Mesa. Uh, as many of you know, I have been very eager to be the mayor of Mesa, Arizona, uh, because I'm really passionate about this city. And I'm, I just want to express my gratitude uh, and appreciation for this wonderful opportunity to, to be able to promote and nurture and build this great city, not just for those of us who live here now, but for the generations that will follow us. Uh, so let's get, get right to it. What is the state of the city for the city of Mesa? Well, I'm very happy to say that Mesa is very strong. And the good news is we're getting stronger. The truth is that Mesa has never grown faster than we currently are growing right now. Uh, we continue to issue more building permits than our larger city to the west, uh, Phoenix, even though they're three times our size. Uh, so there's much to celebrate and there's much to, uh, to brag about. Uh, one of the Mesa's few weaknesses is that I think we're a little bit too humble and we don't, we're, we kind of delight in our humility. So this is an opportunity for us to once a year to put that aside and just talk about how great we are and celebrate all the great things that are happening. So in spite of how good things are going, we don't have the luxury of being able to pull over and take a nap. Uh, we need to make as much hay as we can while the sun shines. We need to take advantage of all the opportunities that we have. Uh, I'm very happy to tell you that financially, Mesa is very healthy. We have a balanced budget and sufficient financial reserves to weather future uncertainties. Uh, and I'm even more happy to tell you that Mesa continues to be an exceptional place to live and raise your family. Um, as I do this job and as I live in Mesa, frequently I have the opportunity as I'm out and about to notice a lot of unique and wonderful things about Mesa. Uh, things that I truly appreciate, things that confirm the decision that my wife and I made many years ago that this is where we wanted to live and raise our family. Uh, and I've started recently when I have those profound Mesa moments to pull out my phone and say, I need to document this and share with people uh, this, this hashtag, why I live in Mesa moment. Uh, so at, in that capacity, you may have noticed a few months ago, I pulled out my phone and documented a wonderful bike ride that I was on in the beautiful desert outside Usury Park. Later, as I sat uh, in the world-class Mesa Art Center and enjoyed a beautiful performance, again, another hashtag why I live in Mesa moment. Uh, shortly after that, I had the opportunity to sit in the beautiful Cubs Stadium, experiencing a fall league, uh, fall league baseball, major league baseball game. Again, another profound Mesa moment. Uh, and then finally, I had the wonderful experience of making that very short trip from my car to an airplane at Gateway Airport. Uh, I hope that you'll uh, enjoy this little video that talks about other people's reasons why, hashtag, they live in Mesa, Arizona. One of the reasons I live in Mesa is the Mesa Music Festival. We live in Mesa for the miles of beautiful trails. I love living in Mesa because it's a compassionate city. Why I live in Mesa? Because the education and its young people are the best the world has to offer. I live in Mesa oh. for the water and the exciting competitions. Why I live in Mesa is because of the great mountain biking and hiking trails here in Haas. in Mesa because it's fun, unique, artistic, and affordable as a young creative. One of the reasons why I love Mesa is because of the terrific food. From Korean to Puerto Rican, there's always something new to try. So that's why we live in Mesa. What about you? Thanks. Doesn't that make you want to get out of here and just go start experiencing all the fun things there is to do in Mesa? So again, I'd invite you to join me in this little campaign to document what's so great about Mesa. And please, uh, there's a little card at your, at your tables today to remind you of this uh, campaign, hashtag why live, live in Mesa. Hope you'll join me. Uh, of course, my number one reason why hashtag I live in Mesa is the great people that are here. The people of Mesa care about each other and they care about this great city. 
Uh, that fact was never so evident as this last November when we saw some really great results come from the questions that we posed to our voters. Uh, speaking of the, the election, it's a great opportunity for me to express my appreciation for the opportunity I have to serve with, serve with some great elected officials in the city of Mesa. Uh, I know you're familiar with our city council, but here's a, a short video that uh, is an introduction of our city council. Uh, thank you. As you can tell, we have a, a, a group of really talented people. I want to, though, ex uh, especially uh, express our uh, uh, welcome to the newest member of our council who just joined us uh, as a result of this last November's election, and that's Jen Duff, representing District 4. Jen, thank you for being here, and thank you. Uh, it's already become very evident that Jen is going to be a really an outstanding member of our council, and we're, we're glad that she has joined us. Um, I need to tell you that Mesa, Arizona is a very well-run city. In this past year, several of our senior leaders have, have been honored by their peers for the outstanding work that they do, including our great city manager, Chris Brady. Uh, Chris leads a very innovative and frugal organization. Uh, in addition to Chris, I want to make sure that we acknowledge our great public safety uh, chiefs. We have with us our police chief, Ramon Batista, and fire chief, Mary Camilli. Would you please join me in a round of applause for Mesa's elected officials and our great city employees. So these two chiefs lead a very good public safety uh, department in the city of Mesa. And uh, one of my hashtag why I live in Mesa reasons is that Mesa is a very safe city. Uh, I'm proud to tell you that the crime rate in, in Mesa currently is lower than it's been any time in the last 10 years. This last year, we experienced a 7% drop in violent crime compared to the year previous to that and had hundreds of fewer uh, property crimes as well. You may have seen on the graph, uh, graphic uh, as you walked in that very recently Mesa was ranked as the ninth safest big city in the entire country. Uh, much of the credit, oh, thank you. Of course, much of the credit for that goes to our very well-trained and equipped uh, Mesa Police Department. Um, in addition to that, we're very fortunate in Mesa to have our very own uh, state-of-the-art crime lab, as depicted in this photograph. And very recently, we were, we were very lucky to have a donation of a new mobile for forensics lab that will help us catch human traffickers in our community. Um, we are so uh, grateful to have these assets that they allow us to solve and to prosecute crimes in our city in real time and make this a much safer place. Uh, like the Mesa Police Department, the Mesa Fire Department has been challenged to keep up with the, the tremendous growth that we're experiencing in our community. But I'm proud to tell you that the Mesa Fire Department has long been recognized as a national leader in being innovative and looking for cost-effective ways to quickly respond to any situation with both the right people and the right equipment. Uh, I think many of you may have seen this video clip that we're about to show. This is a dramatic rescue that occurred just a couple of months ago following one of our very violent monsoon storms. Please take a look. Oh, there it is. To me, this is a very uh, graphic reminder of how well equipped and how trained our public safety people are and how in Mesa, uh, we are the beneficiaries uh, that on a moment's no notice we can bring the right people on the right equipment to any situation. So thank you, Mesa Fire Department, for all that you do for us. As I mentioned, our, our voters in November uh, gave us a, a rounding affirmation that this is an appropriate and important uh, priority in our community, that being public safety. Uh, the results of this, as a result of this last election, we have received the funding that we need to hire 65 additional police officers 
45 additional firefighters, as well as building two new fire stations and one new police station in the east part of Mesa. Uh, this tremendous investment is going to allow Mesa to continue to be a very safe place to live for generations to come. Another one of my hashtag why I live in Mesa reasons is that Mesa is a great place to be a kid. This is something that I think has been one of Mesa's core values since the time that I grew up here. Uh, I'm excited to tell you that last year over 3,000 kids in Mesa uh, participated in our uh, Parks and Rec programs. That's in addition to, and here's a great number, the 9,000 kids that participate annually in our great summer aquatics program. In addition to the city programs, there are thousands of kids that participate in leagues and clubs that use our city pools and fields and rec centers. Um, so Mesa is a great place to be a kid. And now on this topic, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Mesa HoHo Camps. Uh, you might uh, recognize the HoHo Camps as the great service organization that operates our two major league ball fields uh, during spring training. Uh, that's a, a big job, and they, all, they take all the revenue that they, take, that they receive as a result of that volunteer service and add to it with great things like golf tournaments. And that money is then given to the children of Mesa, primarily being used on sports and, and activity programs. Uh, last year alone, listen to this, the Mesa HoHo Cams contributed over $455,000 to the children of Mesa. Please join me in a round of applause for the HoHo Cams. Uh, I'm happy to also tell you that you don't have to be a kid to enjoy living in Mesa. Uh, this past year, over a quarter of a million people uh, took advantage of one of Mesa's rec centers. There is always something to do, it seems like, in the city of Mesa. I can tell you as the mayor, there's always something going on in the city of Mesa. Uh, Mary Main Street, for example, this past December, uh, in including its very popular outdoor ice rink and the Polar Express, uh, attracted tens of thousands of people to our downtown. Uh, every Saturday, our newly renovated Pioneer Park is home to the food truck festival in the evenings, and we've just added a great farmer's market every Saturday's morning. So I'd encourage you to check out Pioneer Park if you haven't done that uh, as well. Uh, every weekend, there are multiple uh, festivals and events around the city. For example, the Las Sendas Food Truck Fridays, neighborhood festivals all the way from East Mark to Riverview, uh, if you've, the Celebration of Freedom, Celebrate Mesa, the Mesa Music Festival. There's multiple Main Street festivals at any given time, including uh, Second Fridays, Dia de los Mortos, Motorcycles on Main, Spark at Dark. I could keep going on and on. Uh, and the good news is that the recreation opportunities in Mesa are going to get just better and better. And again, that is because of our great voters. Uh, the Parks and Rec bond that was passed this last November is going to deliver new parks, new athletic fields, new shared use paths, and even a new dog park. Uh, we also received voter approval to build and update our libraries and to improve the IDEM Museum, which continues to attract thousands of visitors to Mesa every year. Um, here's my next uh, Why I Live in Mesa moment. It, it begins with kind of an embarrassing story. A couple of weeks ago, I had, uh, as I am prone to do, the opportunity to pull up my phone and post on social media because I was in a great uh, sushi restaurant that I thought I'd discovered in downtown Mesa. It, it's one of, not in downtown Mesa, in East Mesa. It's one of those restaurants where the conveyor belts come by and I was just really caught up with how cool this was and how good the food was and how great the service was. So I posted it on social media. Well, you know, I may have earlier in the day also posted the fact that I had a great lunch uh, at one of the local uh, Asian supermarkets. Uh, and so predictably, uh, someone in the social media world made the comment that it appeared that I'm somewhat obsessed with food, and uh, they asked if I was trying to eat my way through the city. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am uh, obsessed with food and trying to eat my way through the city. Uh, and one of my hashtag why I live in Mesa reasons is I love the food that's here. Uh, for example, have you tried the smoked pork green chili burro and mango salsa at Jalapeno Bucks? How about the evil jungle princess at Nundaporn? Have you had the Tres Hermanas stew with the fig empanada at Republica? How about a stacked carne atavada enchilada or the lobster tamale at a blue adobe grill? For breakfast, I would recommend the chilaquiles at Adrian's number two. Uh, for lunch, I would, highly, I would go with the gyro and Greek salad at either George's or the Green Corner restaurant. You will love, I promise you, the pastrami burger with the onion rings at Haven Burger. 
Uh, and of course, everyone knows that the crispy chicken sa sandwich with the homemade chips at Worth are world famous. Anything you get at Unforgettable will be unforgettable. <laughs> All right? Unforgettable, the best name for a Vietnamese restaurant in the world, right? Any, or, or the sushi at Zushi. And of course, the perfect end of any day would be a sunset meal on the patio at Las Cendas. I know that was a long list, but I, I, I tried to pare it down, but it was just painful to think that I wasn't gonna speak about any of those things. So I hope that you'll join me in again talking about all the great food that's in Mesa and post it on social media using the hashtag why I live in Mesa. Another one of my great why I live in, why I live in Mesa reasons is that I'm proud of the fact that Mesa is investing in our future. Uh, this past year, we've opened a, a variety of important city projects, including parks and streets and flood control infrastructure. I am very proud of this facility that we're about to show you a picture of. This is our new household hazardous materials facility. Uh, this uh, building demonstrates the commitment that we have as a city to being good environmental stewards and to removing sensitive materials that previously went to our landfills. Um, before this facility opened, we would have quarterly events and people would have to wait sometime for hours in their cars to dispose of this sensitive material. Um, so I'm a, now you just get to pull right into the driveway and get rid of the paint and oil and insecticide and all the stuff that you don't feel comfortable putting in your black barrel. Uh, so uh, guys, I'm afraid we're out of excuses. Let's all go clean out our garages. All right. Uh, here's another great city facility that opened this year that I'm very proud to tell you about. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the largest piece of infrastructure ever built by the city of Mesa. We're very proud of it. This is the new $121 million Signal Butte water treatment plant. This has the capacity to deliver over 24 million gallons of water a day, and it's what's going to allow the southeast part of our uh, city to continue to develop at the pace that it's at. Uh, next, I'm delighted to tell you, I, I'm sure you've noticed that we're under construction in downtown Mesa. This May, we will dedicate the latest light rail extension all the way out to Gilbert Road. Uh, many of you know light rail has been a tremendous success over the past decade. It has brought over $11 billion in private investment uh, in, along its route. Uh, okay, that's all what I have to say about infrastructure. It might have been a little boring for some of you, I'm, I'm sorry, but I hope you can tell the Mesa takes its future very, very seriously. Uh, strong infrastructure is critical to our continued economic growth, and I hope you'll you agree with me that it's good to know that going forward, Mesa has the power and the water and the transportation assets that we need to continue to meet our needs, both uh, residential and business, into our future. All right, the next hashtag why I live in Mesa reason is because Mesa is a very compassionate city. Mahatma Gandhi once said, a community's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. And I think Mesa is a great example uh, of that concept. Uh, we all know that homelessness is a big issue in all big cities, and that's been especially true the last few years in the Western United States. But I am very proud of the way that Mesa is responding to this challenge. Uh, this past July, we initiated a new program in our city court called the Mesa Community Court. It's very similar to our Veterans Court in that it offers alternative paths for qualified individuals who have committed low-level crimes. So far, 259 defendants have been diverted out of the regular criminal justice system into the community court system. Uh, this community court model is literally changing the way that our law enforcement and court personnel deal with each other. Uh, I've spent most of my life, my professional life, as an attorney, and much of that has been in a courtroom. I'm very familiar with the the normal scenario of prosecutors and defense lawyers and judges all essentially working against each other. I have to tell you that is exactly the opposite of the paradigm that we are using in the community court. Uh, before each court hearing, uh, social service agencies, uh, uh, human uh, uh, navigators, prosecutors, defense lawyers, and judges all sit together in a room and try to figure out how, what can we do to serve and help the people that are gonna come into these hearings. Um, I'd like to share with you a real life story of how the Mesa Community Court is changing lives. Six years ago I was homeless. That's when I became homeless. And I had lived here for six years. What I used to do was go get food, bring it here to this park, and cook out for others. 
So, but one day I had a Gatorade bottle and I put a beer in there. And uh, one of the park rangers came, he smelled my bottle and then gave me a citation. So I went to court and what they did was they kicked me out from Horn to Tempe and then from University to Second Avenue. I didn't have anywhere else to put my stuff. I had to come back to get it. So when I did come back, they recognized me. I was pulled over for it. Well, I had a citation for it, and I didn't go to court because I was in the hospital. The story of Erica as it relates to the city is really a story of change and collaboration. Initially, she was arrested for minor petty offense. Uh, the way the probation situation was at the time, which has now changed, was that she was basically excluded from a large portion of the city that she lived in. The reality is, many of these, these issues that folks that are homeless get arrested for, trespassing, park violations, things like that, they're not violent. They're not crimes against people, but they're punished for that. And the reality is, is all that does is push them farther and farther down in their circumstances. And what they really need is help to help remove some of the chaos in their life so that we can help bring them into self-sustainability. So I knew I had a citation and I knew I had a court date that I was supposed to be at and I wasn't there. And so my attorney was like, you know, you just got out of the hospital. You're still sick under doctor's care. I don't want you going to jail. So he said, he's like, I'm sending you to community court. So I was very grateful for it, you know? And then I just went through the processes and I mean, it helps more than being in jail and then getting out of jail and still not having anywhere to go. Every single person has different needs, has different circumstances, and some may have addictions, some may have mental illness, some may just be homeless for unfortunate circumstances and just need that hand up. What we try to do is find what those person's needs are and help them help them get their needs met. So the, the community court program, in addition to changing people's lives, it's also saving tremendous amounts of money. So far, uh, we have saved over $50,000 in jail costs alone because of the community court. Uh, please join me in welcoming Erica Cox, who is the star of this, uh, this last show, who's with us today. Erica, are you here? There you are. Thank you. Erica, congratulations on graduating from community court and on the great direction that your life is headed. We, we're here to support you. Uh, okay, now I want to focus uh, on why many of you are here today. I understand that not everybody lives in the city of Mesa, although it seems like it's trending that direction. Uh, many of you come here because you do business, and that's because Mesa is a great place to do business. Uh, the last few years, our economic development efforts have particularly been focused on technology and advanced manufacturing, very successfully, I might add. Uh, so we want to celebrate some of the new businesses that have come to Mesa this past year. Uh, we can't talk about all of them, but here's just a few. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Piper Plastics. Piper Plastics is a part of the Mitsubishi Corporation. Uh, they make a wide variety of plastic products, and uh, they were here in Mesa for, uh, to, to dedicate this new 90,000 square foot or, or break ground in a 90,000 foot facility. Uh, this picture reminds me that I was chatting with these executives who literally came from Tokyo, and I said, oh, plastics, what do you guys like, make PVC pipe? Uh, and they, they were very polite uh, in responding appropriately. Uh, no mayor, actually, we're located in this very strategic location because we make the type of plastic that's used uh, in aerospace. Boeing is one of our big clients. We make the plastic that goes into semiconductors. Uh, Intel is one of our big clients. We make the plastic that goes into medical devices. So no, sorry, if you want PVC pipe, it's not us. Um, I guess Home Depot would do a great job at that. But we're very excited to have uh, these guys in town. Piper Plastics is going to be a great addition to our, uh, our high-tech manufacturing industry. Also, we'd like to talk about Cognizant. Cognizant, hopefully, is a company that you're already familiar with. I wouldn't be surprised. They're number 195 on the Fortune 500. Uh, we were fortunate to, that this year they opened a brand new technology and service delivery center in Mesa that is home to over 500 brand new jobs in our community. 
Uh, this next photo or, or video, you might not recognize, but this is actually the southwest corner of Country Club and Southern here in West Mesa. Uh, back in the day, uh, this was the location of a very active big box retailer. But in, in recent years, it's been vacant or underutilized. Uh, I'm very happy to tell you that a great business called 24-7 uh, In Touch has moved into this entire strip center and converted these buildings into office space. Uh, they have great big name clients and currently over 1,400 employees and they are still hiring. So if you know anyone who's looking for a flexible work schedule or they're trying to re-enter the workforce, this is a great place uh, for them to look for a job. And this is a wonderful creative building reuse and reactivation of an important commercial center uh, in West Mesa. Next, let me tell you about a great, uh, exciting Class A office park called The Union that's being developed by Lincoln Properties and Harvard Investments right next to our Cubs Stadium. This uh, project will be breaking ground later this year. Uh, this is gonna be 1.35 million square feet of Class A office space. It's gonna result in thousands of high quality jobs uh, in the Riverview area. And like I said, there were many other great new businesses that came to Mesa this year. I wish we had time to tell you about all of them. But we also want to celebrate the businesses that have expanded this year in Mesa. As you know, 75 to 80 percent of the, of the additional business growth in Mesa comes from expansions rather than new businesses. And there's lots of existing businesses in Mesa that are expanding. Uh, I'm happy to announce this morning, big news, uh, one of our great businesses that's been in Mesa for decades, AT&T, uh, their corporate center at Alma School and University is expanding and they are creating 500 new jobs at that location. Uh, this will be a new customer service center opening later this year. I had the opportunity to tour this 70,000 square foot building uh, just a few weeks ago, and I can tell you it's a very fun place to work. Uh, if it's been a while since you've driven past the Falcon Field area, uh, I'd invite you to do so. You're going to see a lot of brand new buildings coming out of the ground. As you know, uh, this part of Mesa is where many of our aerospace and defense related companies are located. Uh, a few years ago, uh, late Senator John McCain suggested to the Mesa Chamber that we form the Mesa Industry and Defense Council to bring all of these great businesses in that area to together to work on common federal concerns. Uh, one of the leading, uh, one, Boeing, as you know, is, is our largest aerospace and defense council, our uh, aerospace and defense employer, and they are a leading member of the, of the Industry and Defense Council. Uh, Boeing remains very busy as the home of the Apache helicopter. Uh, this past year, they've also added hundreds of new jobs, high quality jobs, uh, to, the, to the Mesa facility. Uh, Northrop Grumman is a name you're going to hear more and more in Mesa. That's because they purchased recently the defense and space contractor Orbital ATK. Uh, since that purchase, they have nearly doubled their current production. You can see we opened a brand new uh, addition to their facility. Uh, creating many new additional engineering and highly skilled manufacturing jobs. Uh, in October, the Phoenix Business Journal called the Gateway area of Mesa, quote, the next industrial development hotspot in Arizona. And that certainly has proven to be true. It's easy to see when you go to the Gateway area that there's lots of new and existing businesses popping up around the airport. For example, uh, Able Aerospace, pictured here, uh, just, which is a Textron company, a, a, a global company, broke ground on a, on a new $9 million, 50,000 square foot expansion of their headquarters. It's gonna add 100 jobs to their facility that already houses 450 people uh, employed here in Mesa. Uh, Skybridge is a development that we've talked a lot about and you've heard a lot about and read a lot about. And for those of you who don't know, Skybridge is a great uh, trade deal between the United States and Mexico uh, and it's, it applies only to our uh, Gateway Airport, uh, and it allows for cargo to be pre-cleared in Mesa and then flown to any domestic airport uh, in the, the country of Mexico. Uh, this project is moving along very well. They are investing heavily in master planning and infrastructure developments and real estate acquisitions, acquisitions on this 300-acre parcel that they have adjacent to the airport uh, at Gateway. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that we already have Mexican customs officials at the airport uh, pre-approving cargo. Also, the airport itself has had a really great year. I'm pleased to tell you that this past year, one and a half million commercial airline passengers made their way through Gateway Airport. That's a 12% increase over the previous year. And right now, we have five airlines flying out of Gateway to over 50 different cities throughout uh, the United States and Canada. Uh, one of the latest developments on the airport, we'd like to thank our congressional delegation. Uh, we recently received approval to 
take down the old Air Force Tower and replace it with a new, beautiful, modern air traffic control tower out of Gateway. Uh, just east of the airport, uh, that's where many of our heavy industrial uh, employers are located. Uh, in that neighborhood, I'm, uh, we were excited uh, earlier this year to go out to CMC Commercial Metals and help them break ground on a new 63,000 square foot expansion. CMC's neighbor, uh, Fuji, is also has big plans in that neighborhood. Uh, their parent corporation has announced they're going to spend $88 million expanding in the U.S., and more than half of that is going to be spent here in Mesa, uh, adding 60 jobs and 90,000 square feet to their facility. All right, you've heard me talk over the past couple of years a lot about the Elliott Road Technology Corridor. Here's a really exciting number related that shows how the progress of the Elliott Road Technology Corridor is going. Uh, last year, there was over $600 million spent in capital investment in that corridor. That includes the first uh, building in the Edge Core 7 building data center campus. Also, Dignity Health. Uh, dedicated their new 50-bed Arizona General Hospital. And of course, everyone's favorite iPhone manufacturer, Apple, uh, continues to spend $2 billion on their 1.3 million square foot facility uh, in the corridor. We'd like to welcome uh, today from Apple, Katie Lohek, who's Apple's new community affairs manager. Katie, thank you for joining us today. Okay, oh, thank you. Uh, okay, just two miles from the LA Road Corridor is the Ray Road Industrial Corridor. For anyone who has uh, driven on the 202 up towards Gateway Airport in the last few months has noticed that there are currently 10 large industrial buildings under construction on Ray Road. And I'm delighted to tell you that there are many more uh, headed uh, uh, to that location as well. Uh, here's a great business development story I'd like to share with you. This company is a, is a homegrown business that has gone nationwide, ER2. They're located just south of our downtown. They're, again, a local homegrown business, and they're in the process of a 40,000 square foot expansion. This is a very innovative company. You can see they're in the business of electronics recycling. So if you've got screens and monitors and stereos or anything that you can plug in, these guys want it, and they're going to recycle it rather than putting it into a landfill. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of great things about this very innovative and successful company. Uh, we could spend the whole day talking about downtown Mesa, and I would enjoy nothing more. Uh, but we're not going to do that. But let me just talk about a few of the highlights. Uh, you may have noticed on our in our downtown Main Street that we have some scaffolding up. Uh, that's because we're taking down some of the uh, historic, or some of the stucco canopies in order to restore and make uh, obvious again the historic character of these buildings. Uh, as we take these, uh, these structures down, we're seeing, uh, exposing some beautiful original facades, and I'm really excited to see uh, the character of our downtown become more obvious to everyone. Speaking of downtown, if you've been to the intersection of Mesa Drive and Main Street, you've noticed there's a huge uh, block-wide hole in the ground. We're very thrilled that the City Creek project is currently under construction. Uh, this is going to result in 30 new single-family homes in that neighborhood, over 240 market-rate apartments, along with over 12,000 square feet of retail. And again, this is right at the intersection of Mesa Drive and Main Street. Uh, there's also, as you can see, 400 underground parking spaces, and it's located right in front of a light rail station. Uh, just immediately to the west, on the other corner uh, in Mesa Drive, uh, I was, the, we're about to break ground on a similar project, a residential and commercial, called The Grid. Uh, and Tony Wall just told me that's going to happen, that's going to break ground before the month is over. So you can see great things are happening in downtown Mesa. We're also very excited about another uh, important corner in our city. This is the corner of Main Street and Country Club. Uh, we're excited to partner with uh, Chicanos for La Causa, who is building the residences on Main. This is a beautiful five-story building that's going to include over 200 market-rate apartments and 20,000 square feet of retail. This, too, is located directly in front of a light rail station. This is going to be a great gateway to our new and improved downtown Mesa. So great things are happening downtown. But I want you to know that Mesa is also very committed to small businesses. Uh, we are proud in Mesa that we have the uh, incubator uh, launch point that helps uh, new businesses get started and learn what they need to know. Uh, this is a, a great graduate of our, uh, of our downtown incubator called Urbix. Urbix recently received a $3.5 million angel investment, and they have signed a lease to move into the Falcon Field area. 
you can tell by their lab coats that these guys do some really cool things with graphite. So look forward to, to great news about this, this up and coming business. Okay, we, we've spent uh, some, some time this morning talking about the great economic impact that these uh, high-tech manufacturing businesses have in Mesa, but I want to share a story about the social impact that some of them are having. Uh, you may have heard me talk in the past about a great company called Dexcom. Uh, in addition to outperforming market projections and employing over 900 people in our city, Dexcom has dramatically impacted the lives of thousands of families including uh, the family of one of our Mesa employees. My name is Dan DeWitt. I'm a firefighter, I've been one for 17 years. My wife and I have four kids, and my five-year-old, Cade, has type 1 diabetes. I've, I have heard him before ask, why do I have diabetes and no one else? That's hard. He was one year old, it was summertime, he was drinking lots and lots of water over the course of about three months. At the time, we kind of just thought that maybe he was just real healthy and drinking lots of water during the summertime. One morning I went to work, Miranda called me and said something's wrong with Kate, he's not, uh, and he's just laying down on the trampoline and, and he won't do anything and got him to the hospital as being his children's and uh, very far along in, in ketoacidosis where uh, his body was, was really acidic from such high sugar, it was an, over 600, and that he wouldn't have lived a few more days. That's where they confirmed that, uh, yes, he has diabetes, that changed our, our whole world from, from then on. My name is Kate, I type 1 diabetic. I have desk cup and a pump. My desk cup is to raise my blood sugar. My pump is to do my insulin. And my desk cum is right here. This is my desk cum. It helps me do my blood sugar. When it's going down with red, that means it's not good. When I'm crying, that means I'm low or high. We have the most recent version of Dexcom. It's, it's uh, the G6, and it's pretty amazing. It's a little lower profile, so it's not as uh, bulky, and it's, uh, doesn't require any finger pricks. So uh, he really likes that, that we don't have to calibrate this thing all the time, like uh, older versions. And, and it, uh, it gives us readings of his sugar 24-7. Um, and, and that uh, has saved his life. I, I don't even know how many times. Because we have the Dexcom telling us what his sugar is at all times, it allows us to have somebody come watch Kay, the babysitter. Um, that wouldn't be possible if we didn't, I, we would never be comfortable leaving him with anybody that, that we didn't know already where his, his numbers were and where they were going. Um, so it's, it's given us an element of freedom to, uh, to get out uh, away from it for a minute, but still tethered to him, you know. With the Dexcom, we're able to keep him at a, at a tighter range, at a healthier range, so that he can live a long life and, and hopefully as, as normal as possible uh, with type 1 diabetes. His future is bright. It's absolutely amazing what, what uh, technology is able to do for someone who, who in, in not too long ago, would have, would have died. Isn't that a great story and a great reminder of really uh, how lucky we are to have high-tech manufacturing in our community? It really has a positive impact on our quality of life. Um, again, one of the other big reasons why hashtag I live in Mesa, Arizona, is that we ha and one of the great reasons why we continue to attract new businesses and business expansion in Mesa is our very strong workforce. Uh, but for that to continue, it's important that we as a community be very supportive of our education systems. Uh, I'm proud of the partnerships that the City of Mesa has had with our uh, K-12 districts uh, for a school readiness program to help kids get ready for kindergarten. Uh, speaking of those preschoolers, a uh, recent statistic has, has said that seven out of every ten current preschoolers when they graduate from high school is going to need at least two years of post-high school education in order to find a job. Recently, the Huffington Post reported, and this is interesting, 85% of the jobs that people will have in the year 2030 
currently don't exist. So again, it's, it's very important that if we're going to be a sustainable community that we really embrace a higher education and, uh, and education in general. Uh, I think that it's important that we as a community rally around in particular our K-12 districts. We have some great uh, public and charter districts in Mesa and we need to support them. Let me put do a, a little plug particularly for Mesa Public Schools. This November, Mesa Public Schools will be going to the voters with an override election. Uh, it's important that the voters understand what's at stake in this election. If that override fails to pass, the teachers and support staff, people in our city, will receive an 8.5% pay cut. That's not the direction that we want to see our teacher salaries go in this community. So I hope you'll join me in, in rallying our community to get behind and support uh, the overdrive in this November's election. Uh, thank you. Mike Hutchinson would like to, love to talk to you if you want to support that. Um, let me tell you about a card that is sitting at your table right now. This is another great uh, program called the Mayor's Teen Force. This is a high school internship program that we have here in the city of Mesa, and many of the great businesses in this room uh, supported this uh, effort last summer. Uh, I hope that you'll consider, uh, as a business, uh, maybe helping us uh, place one of 200 high school seniors uh, that are looking for summer internships this summer. Uh, it's, if, and if you think your business can help us with four days a week of uh, a, an intern this summer, please fill out this form and let us know, and we'd love to, to partner with you on this great program. Uh, another great program that we are anxious to partner on, uh, I, I'm very pleased that uh, Governor Ducey uh, has uh, announced what's called the Achieve 60 AZ Initiative. If you haven't heard of this, this is a statewide uh, goal for us as a, as a state by the year 2030 to have 60% of our high school graduates attain at least a two-year uh, higher education certificate or, some, or the, a, a similar amount of career and technical education. Uh, to that end, I'm very pleased to announce today that uh, we in, here in Mesa are going to create the Mesa Achieves Higher Education Initiative. And again, this will bring together our public schools, the city, the state, Mesa Community College, and other stakeholders uh, for the purpose of improving the higher education attainment level in our community and making that AZ60 goal a reality in Mesa. Uh, this effort is going to be co-chaired by Council Members Heredia and Duff. Uh, so please join us in supporting this great initiative. Mesa has already uh, jumped in with both feet uh, to this cause. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, the Mesa Council on College program in Mesa. I'm pleased to say that this last year they have partnered with the high schools and Mesa Community College in our community uh, to encourage uh, students to complete the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA form. I'm, uh, if you know any high school kids, it's very important that you get them to fill out this form. I'm pleased to tell you that currently Mesa is in third place nationally uh, with regard to the increase in those applications. So we're making a good effort already. Mesa has, as you know, a very impressive collection of institutions of higher education. Uh, we're very proud of the, uh, the great partnership that we've enjoyed with Mesa Community College for the last 50 years at their Dobson and Southern campus, but also at their new Red Mountain campus as well. Uh, we're very pleased to announce that Mesa Community College will be locating their new Information Technology Institute uh, in our downtown as part of the in, uh, Innovation District. Uh, that program is going to, uh, it already exists at their Dobson and, and Southern campus. It prepares students for high demand information technology jobs and it's supported by great companies like Apple and Blackboard and CenturyLink and HP. Uh, also, Mesa is very proud to be the home of A.T. Still University. Uh, I'm, it's, I'm anxious for you to know more about A.T. Still. A.T. Still offers a variety of health science degrees, including a dental school, a PA school, a medical school, and, and other similar uh, educations. Uh, A.T. Still recently announced that they're going to increase the size of their medical school from 400 to 60, 600 students this summer, and that will result in a $5 million investment in their campus over the next two years. Many of you recall that back in the year 2012, then Mayor Scott Smith started an initiative to bring more higher education institutions to the city of Mesa. As a result of that, we now have uh, Benedictine University, which has been an unquestionable uh, success in our downtown. Uh, this last year, Benedictine, Benedictine continued to grow and they experienced a 14% increase in their enrollment. Uh, maybe a little known fact about Ben U is that they currently have the largest athletic program of any, uh, any college in the CalPAC uh, conference. We're very pleased today that we have our friend Charlie Gregory, who was recently uh, named as the president 
uh, of Benedictine University and who owns a home in Mesa uh, with us today. Charlie has been a great partner, and it's good to have you here, Charlie. Um, well, let's clap for Charlie. Now, as, as you know, Arizona State University has always been a great partner for the city of Mesa. We are very honored to have with us today Dr. Michael Crow. And Dr. Crow, I'd like to invite you up to the stage, if you can, please, to have a conversation with us. Good morning, Mayor. Welcome. Thank you so much. Dr. Crow, first of all, both you and I are very, very proud of the ASU Poly Campus here in Mesa. Can you give us a brief update as to how the Poly Campus is doing and, and what the plans are for the future of that campus? Well, we've got this great asset there with uh, being a part of the community on the old Williams, Williams Field Air Force Base. And what we're doing there is we have launched a unique engineering school. We call it the Polytechnic School. It's one of six engineering schools that ASU is now operating. Uh, we have the largest engineering student body in the country, 18,000 engineering students uh, at ASU, 4,000 uh, uh, additional students online for 22,000 total engineering students. Poly is the place where in these facilities that you see in the picture, we can ca carry out a unique way of teaching engineering that we think is scalable to 10 or 15,000 students. We've got a range of other programs on the campus. Uh, across a wide spectrum, so it's a complete, comprehensive university campus there on, on the Polytechnic. Uh, we're also advancing uh, a new innovation uh, and uh, campus there, a new corridor for innovation and developments. We're dealing with companies now that are looking at building around that site uh, in the entire uh, facility. Uh, we had some uh, visitors last week from Los Angeles looking at a major new opportunity related to a technology spin out of ASU itself. So we're excited about the potential for the Poly campus to grow to uh, 10, 15, 20,000 students and also to take on uh, this notion of being a place where students can uh, learn in a new way of learning, engage across all of the industries here in Mesa and in the region. So we're really excited about uh, the Poly campus. Well, thanks to your, for your great commitment to Poly. If you've been out there recently, there's a lot of great, beautiful new buildings. I know you've announced you're going to do uh, some additional do, new dorms out there. Right, right. we're building a, a, another dormitory complex. We're continuing to expand our activities there. We're doing that with uh, private, uh, public-private partnerships. So we're able to advance the university in a new kind of funding model, and that's really uh, working out well on the Poly campus. Well, thanks for all you're doing out there. Now, Dr. Crow, as you know, uh, Mesa is very excited about the, 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 uh, the, what is now the reality that ASU is coming to our downtown to anchor our downtown innovation district. I have to tell you that even more exciting than you coming, in my mind, is what you're bringing to our downtown. Yeah. Can you describe here to the Mesa community what is the program that you're bringing to downtown Mesa? You know, it's hard, it's hard to imagine, you know, you, you see it every day, you know, the rate of change in new businesses. You talked about the fact that 80% uh, of jobs uh, in 2030 don't even exist yet. It's hard to imagine what those jobs will be. If you travel around the world, there are a few very significant digital innovation centers that exist. There's one in Sydney that I visited, one in Hong Kong that I visited, one in Singapore that I visited, one in London, one in New York City. We're building uh, the one for the Western United States here in Mesa. This will be the place where uh, everything digital that you can possibly imagine, every level of creativity, every level of new company idea, new spin out in science and technology, in the arts, in, in music, in everything that's affected by anything digital, we're going to be doing in this uh, highly creative, highly energized facility that we're so excited to be a part of here in downtown Mesa. That's great. So uh, as, as we've uh, talked about, the new jobs that this economy is going to require uh, center around technology. As, as I've gone to, to seminars and, and uh, uh, conventions over the last few years, I consi consistently hear the words augmented reality, artificial right. intelligence, uh, 3D design. Yes. I understand that those are, are going to be part of this program. That all of those are going to be a part of it. The hottest thing right now in the market uh, that people are looking for is show me a kid who is uh, trained in English and digital technology systems. Show me a kid who's trained in uh, uh, the arts but also is digitally capable. So what we're going to be working on is how do we become a part of the creative wave at a global scale with this facility linked into all those things that are related to, um, uh, when you say augmented reality, people think only of cars. They think only of, of trucks and autonomous systems and so forth. You have to imagine that these things will be everywhere in all aspects, in medicine, in the arts, in, in, in music, in, in companies, in, in the restaurant business, in everything, everything. And so what we're looking to do is have a place here in the valley where this is the center, this is the, the creative center. High school kids will be connected, 
college students attending ASU, uh, uh, businesses from the community, everybody will be a part of this. And this is, we figured out by looking at how to do this, doing this in other areas, that this thing can really work. So we're very excited about this facility. Well, again, Dr. Grove, thank you. We can't uh, thank you enough for the commitment that you've made to MESA. Uh, we thank really you, appreciate you being here today thank as you. well. Thank, thank you very you. much. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't, uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of the city of Mesa and the great things that are going on here. But as I said earlier, we don't have the luxury of being able to rest. We're going to need your engagement to help us get to where we want to be as a community, to get to that next Mesa. So let's get to work. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for joining us for the Mayor's State of the City Breakfast, presented by the Mesa Chamber of Commerce.